Okay, guys, in this uh, video segment, we're going to talk about the chemical thermo or thermochemical equations and how we basically apply this idea of energy now to a balanced chemical reaction. Okay? So, first thing is, when we're talking about thermochemical equations, we need to have um, some sort of reaction that happens. Okay? So, we need an equation. Okay? And what we're going to do is solve for that net enthalpy change that happens during a chemical process. Some things that we need to be careful of uh, physical states of the reactants and products must be given, so we need to know if it's a solid, liquid, or a gas. Uh, the reason being is because if we're a liquid or a gas, that's different energy states, so our numerical values would be different. Okay? We are going to assume that we're running under standard conditions of one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, those are standard conditions for therm thermodynamics. Um, now, if we're not on those standard conditions, there is ways to manipulate that, but we're going to make the assumption that we do stay at standardized conditions for our process. Okay. So to do that, if you take a look, here are two examples of a thermochemical equation. So we have methane that's reacting with oxygen, so that's just combusting, to make carbon dioxide and water. We see the states of matter in. And you'll notice how it says plus 890 kilojoules. Now previously in our different units, what we would do is say plus, and we'd use that delta symbol right here, or that big triangle, and we wouldn't say how much energy was being released or absorbed. So in this case, we're actually showing that we're releasing 890 kilojoules of energy. Okay, So we're seeing that this is an exothermic process. And we write that on the right-hand side being exothermic. We also can see the example where water breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen okay, through the electrolysis of water. Okay, And when we have the electrolysis of water, to get this to happen, water doesn't naturally do this. We need to constantly put energy in or we have an endothermic process. So the endothermic process, we normally would put that delta on the left-hand side. But instead, now we just put a numerical value in. Okay, so as we go through these process, we can now take our normal chemical equation, and instead of just saying plus energy or energy plus, we actually put numerical values in. And the beauty is this: we can now use this in a stoichiometry problem, where this reaction has a one to two to one to two to eight hundred ninety ratio. So you can treat this the same way as you did these in terms of mole ratios except for it's just kilojoules instead. Same thing down here. It's a 242 to 2 to 2 to 1 ratio in there. Now, one thing you may be careful of and make note of is that when you use them in a mathematical calculation, okay, and we start talking about the enthalpy change for the reaction, RxN stands for reaction. Um, so the enthalpy change for the reaction, this reaction, okay, has a negative 890 kilojoules. It's negative because it's exothermic showing it's going to release energy. This reaction is absorbing it, so it's a positive 242 kilojoules of energy. That becomes important because as we start looking at different chemical reactions, this one tells us that it's exothermic and releasing. This one means it's absorbing. Okay, So very different things in terms of the chemistry, keeping track of what's negative, what is positive. So make sure you do that if you pull numbers off of these um, balanced equations. It won't say negative here, notice. It'll still say plus here because this is known to be releasing by where you put it. So here we're spatially putting it on the product side versus the reactant side. If you don't put it in the reaction, you need to write it as negative and positive. Okay. Now we take a look, take a look at these two different equations. So um, we often see that the heat of the reaction is not written within the thermochemical equation. It's actually written, written separately. So here we have a normal chemical balance equation and then we have our heat of reaction written separately. So it's also viable and able to do it that way. Um, but we would not consider this a thermochemical equation. This would just be a balanced chemical equation with thermochemical data written next to it. Okay. Same thing down here where we have the barium hydroxide reacting with ammonium nitrate. We now get a heat of reaction this way. Again, we see exothermic up here and we see endothermic down here. Okay. So all this is doing is putting a numerical value to the energy change based off of these balanced chemical equations. Now, we're going to take a look at this process and talk about well, how do we now manipulate this mathematically, okay? So we're going to actually go back to, let's say, oh, let's use the top one, okay? And we have sodium hydroxide and we have sulfuric acid and we react the two together. I'm gonna to make sodium sulfate, I'm gonna make some water, okay? So let's try to do a little practice problem that relates to these, uh, this scenario, okay? So let's assume I'm going to use an excess of sulfuric acid. So the H2SO4 is in excess. And I'm going to put in, let's say, uh, I'm going to use 
or let's just go 45 grams of my sodium hydroxide, okay? So if I use 45 grams of sodium hydroxide, and I want to know the energy change. Okay, so that's what I want to know. I have an excess of sulfuric acid. Okay, so really this just becomes a stoichiometry problem that we embed the map or we embed the thermal chemical information to it. So I'm going to start my problem like I would have any of these. I need a balanced chemical equation, which we already have. We know it's a 2 to 1 to 1 to 2 to 732 negative kilojoules. Okay. So and I just start my problem like I normally would. So I have 45 grams of sodium hydroxide. And I want to solve for kilojoules for my reaction. And that's what I'm doing. Okay. So first step, let's go from sodium hydroxide. Let's go from grams to moles. So sodium hydroxide, sodium is 22.99. So that's oxygen, that's 22. Uh, 0.99, little trusty calculator here, plus 16 for action, plus 1.01, .01, and we get a molar mass of exactly 40. Okay, so 45 grams, 40 grams per mole. Okay. And now here's the easy step. We know from our balanced chemical equation that we have two moles of sodium hydroxide. So we have two moles and for every two moles of this we get a negative 732 kilojoules of energy here. Okay, So for every two moles of this it's a negative 732 kilojoules of energy. So we use it just like another, another ratio in our normal stoichiometry. My grams of sodium hydroxide cancels, my moles of sodium hydroxide cancels, and now I can plug the math in and solve for my kilojoules. Okay. So if we do that, I take my 45 divided by 40, and then take it times a negative 732, and I divide that by 2, and I get a negative 411.75 kilojoules. And then I want to round this right sniffing figure, so I only had two sniffing figures up here, so my answer is going to be 410 kilojoules. And it's got to be negative. This is representing it being exothermic. Okay? So really the take home here is we can do everything we've done before in terms of gas laws, ideal gas law, stoichiometry, molarity, um, density, all the old stoichiometry we've been doing before, and we have one new piece. And that little piece is we have a relationship between energy and moles now. Okay? So with energy and moles, right here, we can always go from the moles of our chemical reaction to the energy that's either released or if it was positive, it would be absorbed and solve for energy, okay? So that's just one practice problem. When we come back to class, we will actually start with these three and have you guys work through these three uh, in class. Thank you.